Hey guys and welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk about the U-Hyper subroutine for hyperelastic materials. We know that these materials are formulated using the strain energy density function, which is a TL or total formulation. And it is based on the first and second invariants of the left or right and Cauchy green strain tensor and the determinant of the deformation gradient denser. Also, it can be formulated using the principal searches. However, we mostly use the form which is based on the left Cauchy green strain tensor. Also, the Cauchy stress tensor can be derived using the following formula. And if we expand that formula we get to this relation in which B I K K J is the isochoric left Cauchy green strain tensor. I bar one, I bar two is the isochoric strain invariance, and J is the determinant of the deformation gradient tensor. So what is the isochoric formulation? In this formulation, we take out the uh, volume effects from the uh, deformation gradient tensor, especially when we use the incompressible materials. Also, B bar is the F bar multiplied by F bar transpose and I bar 1, I bar 2 are derived using these formulas. So let's get to the U hyper subroutine. It is mostly used when we want to model a hyperelastic material and we want to avoid having a UMAT. In this uh, subroutine, Abacus only gets the strain energy density functions in the form of bi1, bi2, and aj, and u. u2 means that u1 is the strain energy density function, and u2 is the deviatoric part of it, which is mostly used when we want to model the Mullins effect. Also, we have a flag, uh, which is uh, determinant of the incompressible or compressible materials. The advantages of the U hyper uh, subroutine when we compare it uh, with the U mat subroutine for a hyper elastic material is that uh, in here we don't have to uh, define the DDSCD matrix or the stress components of our course does them all. So UI1, UI2, UI3, and etc. are formulated like the following relations. You can find it in the Abacus documentation. Note that we don't have to uh, define all of these terms. It, it is dependent on our uh, density function. For example, if we uh, just uh, want to model our material using Neohukian model, we only have to uh, define the parts which are dependent on I bar 1. Next, I'm going to write a U hyper subroutine which uses a model that is a combination of the Mooney Rivlin and Gent hyperelastic models. Continuing with the subroutine, here we have a model which is a combination of a Mooney Rivlin and Gantt hyperelastic material models. And we know that the density function uh, have two parts, which is the deviatoric part and the volumetric part. The volumetric part uh, is used only when we have a compressible material. Now for the uh, deviatoric part, we have uh, three terms. Uh, the two terms uh, are for the Mooney Rivlin model, and the last term is for the um, Gantt model. 
we have a com complication here uh, if you take a close look at the highlighted part we have a division here uh, so we have to make a control parameter uh, to make sure that we don't have a division by zero and for the uh, volumetric part we have this formula uh, I wrote three state variables uh, for um, observation only. The state variable one is the i bar one minus three. State variable two is the i bar two minus three, and state variable three is the effective stretch. Next, we have to uh, get this constant from user a one a two until B module, um, A1, A2, A3, A4, B1, B2, B3, B4 are used for Mooney Rivlin model, and mu and j is used for Gent model. And bulk modulus is used when uh, we have a compressible material. Uh, so after we uh, get these constants from user, we have to uh, set our initial parameters, uh, for example, u, which have the strain energy density function and its deviatoric and etc. Uh, equal to zero because uh, we only want to um, write our terms when necessary. Also, we have two parameters, i bar one minus three, uh, this is because I want to reduce the volume of my codings and a control parameter. Uh, when uh, my JM is lower than a really small number, we have a gain fact, uh, which is the um, factor in our gain model equal to zero. Else we have the division. Uh, also, if our gain factor becomes greater than uh, 0 0.95, we have a gain factor equal to 0 0.95. Uh, if we take a closer look to this equation, we, we will see that this is uh, the highlighted part. Uh, and we want to, as I said, avoid division by zero. Next, we write the U1, which is the a strain energy density function, and we don't want to model the Mullin effects, so I2 will be automatically set to zero. Then, uh, if I have a compressible material, uh, my uh, U1 will have an extra part, which is for the compressible part. Next, we want to um, write and determine our first and second derivatives, which are uh, the following uh, highlighted relations. These relations are pretty straightforward and I won't waste time explaining them. You can uh, simply uh, found them, you can simply find them on the internet or you can do it uh, manually. Next, uh, our second derivatives and uh, also our control parameter, which we want to, again, avoid division by zero, which we want to, again, avoid division by zero. And our incompressible flag uh, for the deviatoric parts. Uh, next, our effective stretch and, and definition of our state variables. As you can see, our subroutine ends here and it was pretty simple. Uh, we don't have to define the DDSTD or the Jacobian matrix or the stress components. Abacus uses uh, these derivatives and the definition of the uh, U1 to calculate the uh, effective stress and our strains. This concludes our video. If you find this video helpful, uh, please support me by liking and subscribing to my channel. Take care.